Hey guys, it's your girl Pyrus, and I'm back. So, just to give you guys a little update, I currently have COVID, so I'm quarantining, and I'm miserable, to be honest. And I just wanted to, like, you know, just have a moment with you guys really quick, a little, what is it called, like a heart-to-heart. -heart. So, I feel like I haven't been recording videos, and you can see, like, if you were on my TikTok, there's, like, no new content, really. And I'm gonna be honest, I decided that this is something that I really want to do. Content creation, I enjoy it. I like seeing the comments. I like seeing and experiencing new video games. And I think for me personally, I'm scared that I'm gonna be bad at it. Like I'm genuinely scared that this is gonna be a big flop and no one's gonna like my videos, no one's gonna watch them and I'll just be, you know, being laughed at. And I think that that fear has been like eating away at me for so long. Like I haven't been playing games and I love playing games. Um, I've been scared to like show you guys new stuff because I'm scared you guys won't like it. Like, I think what I'm going to do is just start creating the content that I like. And if you guys like it, thank you. And I'm glad I found people that are like me. And if you don't like it, I'm sorry hopefully it reaches the people that do like my content and want to support me and want to build the community together so we can like be like-minded individuals like just in a place where we can all grow creatively that's kind of what I want you know I want a place where my sister because she really wants to be a gamer y'all like she really does I want a place where she can feel comfortable making videos I'm sorry um, I want a place where she feels comfortable making videos and I feel like it's my responsibility to create that not only for her but for more people like her or like me that want to make videos but are too shy or have a disability or have an impediment that prevents them from doing so so I'm tired of being um, not a slacker but maybe a slacker or just scared of my own dreams we're just going to do this I'm going to play some Scarlet Hollow today because I feel like it's something a little bit more relaxed. Um, if this video is short, it's because I do um, have COVID and it's kind of hard for me to talk a lot. So thank you for sitting by with my um, sadness and <laughs> let's get started with the video. Let's not be sad, y'all. Like, like, let's just be hype. Okay, so I got to fix my settings for this real quick. I'm just going to be really transparent with you guys when it comes to these things. Because, um, girl, I kind of just learned how to use Streamlabs. Um, yeah. So, hopefully that's good. And let's just get started. So, last time we started off, um, last time we ended off, girl, Duke got clapped. <laughs> and I still feel bad. Oh, no, no, no. Oh. I still feel kind of bad. Um, so we did save the game. And just to set the mood, um, do y'all need a recap? I feel like if you're watching this, you probably watched episode two already. So I'm gonna say no. I feel like I know what happened. Watch me forget. I'm gonna turn the lights off. I'm gonna see how that looks real quick. Hold on, y'all. Just to set the. I am a closet, by the way. Hey. Okay. Cool. 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 You open your eyes. The sun has risen. The birds are singing, and you are still alive. For now, you're safe. Your gaze wanders across the room to the window in the woods beyond. You wonder if the monsters are lurking there, right now, just beyond the trees, ready to pounce on you as soon as you leave the crumbling estate. I just made words up. A familiar unease settles into your gut, tangling into a knot of anxiety, wriggling as the events of last night play out in your head. You can't help but remember Duke, slumped against a tree, pieces of him scattered across the clearing. You're not sure if you'll ever feel okay again after what you've seen, but you can't stay in bed forever. Girl, if I'm being honest, look, we just watched this man get clapped. I'm probably gonna pack my bags and dip. I'm not staying in the holler. Hunger pulls you from the clammy depths of the mattress. Check out the possum? Yeah, let's check out the possum. You open the drawer to check in on the little possum you met last yesterday. Oh, good. He's still there. That's nice. Let's pat him. You reach in to pat the little man's. He immediately plays dead. 
You leave him to the theatrics and close the drawer. I'm sorry. In real life, I probably would not do that. Maybe I would. I really feel like I'm Snow White, for real. Uh, let's see. Let's poke around the closet. I feel like we only saw this creepy-ass doll. Um, great. The doll didn't move during the night. Maybe it isn't haunted after all. Though after everything you went through yesterday, that's hardly any consolation. You turn back to the rest of the room. Let's look out the window. You creep towards the window. What the fuck is that? I think that's a man in the woods. I think that's a man. I'm pretty sure that's a man in the woods. There's a man in the woods. For, for a second, you thought you saw movement. It could have been an animal. It could have been something else. Whatever it was, it's gone now. Am I crazy? Was there a man in the woods? Leave the window. Let's not be curious ever again. That's what happens when we get creative. Let's text Stella. Let's text Avery. It's probably a good idea to check in with your new friend. You can't imagine she's holding up very well. Wait, how about we just... How about we ask her how she's holding up? Like, damn, why would we... Hey, what up, sis? It might take her a minute to get back to you. In the meantime, get dressed and head down to the kitchen. Time to start our day. Let's go, besties. That cat's still sitting there mad. You're back in the kitchen. Fru-Fru eyes you from her favorite spot on the counter. Uh-oh. You're back in the... Oh, sorry. Um, Let's ask Fru-Fru if I can pet her. Excuse me, ma'am. But may I pet your beautiful fur? Part of you hopes that flattery might win her over, as silly as it might seem. You are, after all, talking to a cat. Fufu merely, merely flicks her tail faster. It doesn't look promising. Hey. Ah, oh, shit. Did you know the police called me this morning? Here go Tabitha. Because we tried to tell her what happened last night. Here she go, bro. You've only been here one day. You've already had a run-in with the cops. Um, let's see. Girl, Duke Blood is not more. This, this option right here? No, ma'am. That's all on Stella. I'm sorry. I'll let her know every chance I get. Um. Let's tell her. Did the cops say anything about Duke? Did they find the body? Body? They didn't say anything about a body, but apparently he never went home last night. And they had quite a few questions about you, Pyrus. And before you ask, don't worry. I told them you're an upstanding citizen. Um. Thanks for having my back. Ah. Uh, sure, what else is family for? Um. Um. Let's tell her. There are monsters in the woods. We need to leave. I saw them with my own two eyes. Is that what Stella's got you on about? That girl spent years chasing her own shadow, thinking it's Bigfoot. This is just a sleepy mountain town where nothing ever happens. I'm not about to flee in terror just because Stella thinks you saw some ghouls. What is up with you and Stella? Dot, dot, dot. We just have history, that's all. I don't need to explain myself to you. They dated. I'll say I'm sorry. I, I gotta stay on her good side. Good. Never mind. Never mind. I'll take it back. It's fuck Tabitha. No! Oh shit, I, I was clicking through really fast. I don't want to hear complaints. Just do what I ask and we won't have any more problems. Tabitha takes a few steps towards the door. Sunset. Oh, she wants us back by sunset. I think that's what that said. I hope y'all read that. Because I didn't read that shit. Your cousin huffily exits the... Damn. Her footsteps fade down the hall, ending in the characteristic creak, creak, then slam with the front door as it opens and closes behind her. Once again, you're the only human in the estate. A text from Stella. Hey, Pyrus. Thanks for checking in. Hope you're all right, all things considered. I'm doing okay. Not great, but hanging in there. Up most of the night on... Up most of the night on cryptid forums, but no good answers yet. I'm at the library if you want to join. I have scones. 
the fuck is a scone? What the fuck is a scone? What is a scone, y'all? Um. Ghost her. Can we really ghost her? I mean, I feel like there's really no choice. I feel like the game needs, like, it won't. I don't know if that would work. What would y'all do, y'all? I would ghost her, to be honest. I'll be there in a bit. Still waking up. Yeah. Let's make a... I'm not going to that freaking garden, that haunted-ass garden. Sure, Stella might have scones at the library, but scones are later. Jelly sandwiches now. You quickly scrape together the ingredients and gobble up the delicious breakfast. Look, y'all. Um, when I was a child, I used to make myself tea parties. And the, the prime, the, the, the delectableness that was a jelly sandwich with the crust cut off. And I cut it into little cubes. Fucking immaculate. And look, that shit right there. I give that shit to Gordon Ramsay. Serve it up. This shit is delicious. You couldn't stop me. I was I was drinking my little, I think it was it was water. It was water in my little plastic teacups. But you couldn't tell me that shit wasn't Earl Grey. That shit. I was having a delicious tea and crumpets. Tea and crumpets. I don't even know what a fucking crumpet is, to be honest. Anyway. Yeah. Delicious breakfast. And that's that. You want to go? Let's go in the garden real quick. As your eyes wander to the garden door, you shudder, remembering the bleak glance of something you saw from your upstairs window. Let's see if there are any traces of there some being someone in there. It was probably just a raccoon. That was not a fucking raccoon. That was not no raccoon. That was literally a person. There was somebody in there with the bed sheet on his head. He was dead. He was he was gone. Um, to prove that it's nothing, at the very least, you don't see anything now. I'm going further. They can't kill me. I'm the main character. You wander further into the garden, trying to pinpoint the spot where that thing had been lurking. If there had indeed been a thing to begin with. Check the ground. Oh, I wasn't expecting to find anything. I wasn't expecting to find anything. You crouch down, pushing aside the grinning to examine the soft earth. A boot print. A boot print in what looks like some kind of viscera. Okay. Your thoughts turn to the specter from the night before. You snap a quick photo just in case it comes in handy later. You text it to Stella. You sent the photo to Stella. Look what I found in the garden across from my window. No way that's Tabitha size. Girl, make sure you lock that door. You head back inside, time to figure out what to do with the rest of your day. Let's head to town. Let's go visit Avery. Can we invest in a bike? I would not walk through this every day. The walk back to town is much less pleasant today than it was yesterday. When you didn't yet know that the woods were full of monsters and strange men who knew your name. You stare anxiously into the darkness between the trees, searching for any signs of movement. But the woods are still, at least for now y'all North Carolina is not this peaceful I promise you that I think they're in North Carolina the autumn tinged mountains sprawling for, mount for miles in every direction now feel less like beautiful scenery or more like the walls of a cage your phone buzzes in your pocket jeez that's creepy all the more reason to come to the library damn you do not care about me and look who I found at the library. She said she was all night thinking about that video. Adding you to the group text. Don't add me because I know she be talking shit. Kanika looked like a type to talk shit about me. I'm only here because it's quieter than the store. Or was, lol. And I'm trying to figure out what animal that could be. I don't buy into this harbinger of doom stuff. Well, you'll buy into it once you realize shit's getting real. Like, I can't stand people like that. Like, okay, so I get wanting to be logical with like stuff like this happening. But girl... You just saw a video of a thing killing somebody. Well, I don't even know, like, what specific was on the video, but we just saw Duke getting clapped, and there was a thing that looked like Nika Avocado in a tree. Like, that that's real, babes. Whatever. Sounds like they're having fun. Um, can't wait to solve this mystery. We're the, we're the mystery gang. Let's go. Oh my god, it's Avery. Oh my god. Oh my god. 
Hold on. Hold on. It's Avery, bitch. Hold on. I love them so much. You make it into town in one piece. No creatures jumped out at you. No scary men blocked your path. The sight of other people is comforting, helping you forget the things you've witnessed as if they... Okay, whatever. Oh, my God. It's... <laughs> oh, hey, pirates. Hey, Avery. Hey. Ah! <laughs> we were just talking about you. I stopped by Sybil's to pick her, pick, pick up her new tea blend, and, well, you're the biggest thing to come into town since the coal mine. Folks have been absolutely buzzing about you. Sorry, guys, I can't do voices. I'm kind of sick. I'm very sick, actually. Um, you went out with Cell last night, right? I would have went out with you if you asked, babe. If you would have just asked me. What would you do if I went into your cafe and I ordered everything off the menu and I didn't leave you a tip and you follow me outside and ask why didn't you leave a tip and I say my only tip is that I love you. anyway um you went out with Stella last night right did something happen out there she barely even waved when she walked by Damn. I'm going to tell Avery the whole truth. Stella and I went into the woods to try and find a skunk ape, but we ran into something way worse. Actual monsters. Sybil said they're called ditchlings, but whatever they are, killed Duke. I'm sorry. Bleh, whatever they are, killed Duke and have been mutilating the local wildlife. Whoa, whoa. Slow down. Duke is dead? It's true, I'm afraid. That's awful. Ha Has anyone told Bo? Yes, he's taking it as well as you can imagine. I'll be going up to check on him today, the poor lad. I can't believe you had to see that, Pyrus. You want to comfort me? I'll tell you what, I'm on break for the next half an hour. How about you swing by the diner? When he can fix you some of Sybil's new blend and try to calm your nerves. Yes. It's chaga and lemon balm. It's always helped me on the bad days. And if you need to talk about what happened, I'm all ears. Anyways, it's up to you. See you around, Pyrus. See you, Sybil. Take care now, Avery. I better get back to it myself. I'm glad I was able to catch you this morning, if only to see how you were holding up. Please don't hesitate to stop by if I can be of any help. Why does... This is a question I, because I think they all know that this is happening, and it's just like they're just keeping it under wraps. Why does anyone in this town seem to know or care that a man died? This town has had, oh sorry, this town has had a hard run of things, Pyrus. People here lead different lives. Their paths are full of death. No one in Scarlet Hall is estranged to it. Sorry, words are hard. Kanika and Miles lost their father, but not but a few years ago. We've all had to learn how to live with it in our own ways. As for your encounter with the police, people tell a lot of stories up in the hills, especially city folk who wouldn't know a bear from a Bigfoot. No offense, of course. But I'm afraid that means most folks are going to take your claim very seriously, at least not until they see what you saw with their own eyes. Be gentle with empires. I'm sorry to cut our conversation short, but I got things I need tending to. Stay safe and God bless. You probably have a bit of all time before you need it at the library. We're going to the diner. You head towards the diner. The diner is a little quiet today, but the air is still heavy with the tantalizing smell of bread. Look at Avery, yo. Oh my God. Look at Avery. I'm not going to tell them sh What do I sound? Beware. Like, what? Doom. Like, no. Let's just get to the booth. What the fuck? You slide into the booth. Across from Avery. Hey there, stranger. Before you can exchange words, Winnie slides up a fresh mug of tea in hand. Heard you might need this. 
answer to 29 down is oink, by the way. What? But the clue is pin sound. That's not the sound. How is that a sound? A, pin, a pig pin. Avery, we're so smart. Like, we got so much in common. Wait, like a pig pin? Are you kidding me? How was I supposed to guess that? I don't know why you even bothered with those things. They're just going to frustrate you. It's just something to do to fill the time. But maybe I should switch this to Doku. When he leaves Avery contemplating daily newspaper puzzles, returning to her seat behind the counter. So, uh, thanks for telling me about last night. If you really want to get into the grisly details, you can tell me. I won't judge. Look. 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 I... I guess we can chat about last night, but I really came here because I wanted to get to know you. Oh, yeah? All right. What do you want to know? Oh, my God. Oh, my. Have you lived here your whole life? Nah, I moved here from Charlotte. Oh, my God. They are from North Carolina. Holy crap. Ugh. North Carolinians. What up? I'm North Carolinian, too. Um, nah, I moved here from Charlotte. Gosh. Three years ago now? Moving from Charlotte to someplace like this? That's kind of a... A jump, okay. Maybe a little more, I lost track. Aunt Winnie offered me a place to stay and a job. And who was I to pass up on that sort of generosity? Good point. To be honest, it feels like I just moved in. Practically everyone apart from the coal folk grew up in this town, so it's like I'm the perpetual new kid. Don't get me wrong, folks here are plenty polite and friendly, but there's a shared history I'll never be a part of. Let's say, let's let's use our keen eye, guys. Maybe you're more at home than you think. Stella really talked you up, talked up your party yesterday. I don't think she had done that if she didn't think you were really part of the town. It could be that you're getting in your head about fitting in. Hey, you know, thanks. I hadn't actually thought about it like that. Do you regret moving here? Uh-oh, now she listening! Look! Girl, I saw you. I'll be listening to. I'm nosy as hell. I'll be like. Write that shit down. Write that shit down. Yeah. I don't think I have the choice to have second thoughts. I'm not going anywhere without Aunt Winnie. What did I just say? I don't think I have the choice to have a second thought. To have second thoughts. I'm not going anywhere without Aunt Winnie. And there's no way she's leaving this place. Let's ask why do you leave Charlotte. Uh, I don't know. I feel like it's touchy. She, look at her. Look at her. Why'd you leave Charlotte, if you don't mind me asking? Nah, it's cool. I was, ha she's still looking. I was having some educational disputes with my folks. Um, they had thoughts on how my life was supposed to go, and I had other plans. It, uh, wasn't great. Especially since I was still stuck under their roof. And my aunt heard of it. She offered me a job and a place to stay. And the rest is history. All right, I think I'm ready to talk about what happened last night. Spill the tea, bitch. Let's go. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You spilled the beans. Glad to have someone to talk to about the horrors you witnessed. It's almost like Avery could be our life partner. Wow. That's some heavy stuff. No wonder Stella seemed distant. Monsters in the woods. I may not have lived here long, but I never heard of anything like that happening around these parts. I can't say I like the thought of it. Now that I think about it, when the cops came in for their morning coffee, they mentioned something about going out to the woods to look for someone. It must have been Duke. They seemed so disconnected from it. I figured it couldn't be very serious, but wow. I don't get it. They saw Stella's footage, they saw what happened out there, but it feels like so far, all they done is hound me. Hey, I don't know if it helped your anxiety, but even if they think you did something, I'm pretty sure they wouldn't bother going after you. Those cops come here, 
come in here every day and I feel like I know them pretty well by now. And let me tell you, they have no follow through. That's fucking terrible, Avery. But like, also good for me, but also fucking terrible. No comment. I can't tell you the number of complaints they just like dropped after a day or two. And I'll vouch for you if they try anything. Thank you. <laughs> I don't want to say that because he's our sorry they're us Avery goes by they them pronouns get it right people they are very adamant on staying so I'm not gonna say that that we're on a case but I hardly know where to start let me know if you hear anything definitely I mean it looks like my shift is starting I hope you're doing a bit better a diner is where everyone comes to gossip, so I hear a lot about what goes on around here. I'll let you know if anyone mentions those monsters or anything else strange or unusual. Avery slits out the booth, giving a friendly half wave before disappearing into the back. You leave the diner, ready to continue your day. Okay, let's swing by the general store. Okay. Oh shit, you got the Yadas. The Yeezys. This is your first time seeing the general store in the light of day. A young man sits at the table by the register, too preoccupied with his phone to care about, to care that you stepped in. Stop trying to be like that. Like, stop trying to tell everybody that. Nobody cares. Nobody wants to know. Keep your mouth closed. Nobody wants to know. You should leave town. There are monsters in the way. I don't give a damn. Fuck. I don't like how my character thinks that people just got money to get up and leave. That's giving, it's giving. Um. Hi, I'm Pyrus. I just got into town yesterday. I'm Miles. Um. So if I wanted to buy chips or something, do I talk to you or you can just have some chips if you want. It's not a big deal. Um, I'm paying for my chips, I insist. Oh, come on. I'm trying to be nice. Um, but wouldn't Kanika, wouldn't that make Kanika mad? Well, she shouldn't have left me in charge and when she's off doing whatever. If Kanika cares about me offering some free chips, she can hire someone else and let me live my life. Damn, Miles don't give a fuck. She inherited the store, and I don't want to keep getting suckered into working here just because I'm her brother. Damn. We make most of our money on broke orders anyway. A bag of chips doesn't make a difference. I'm going to say I'm good. I'm good, thanks. All right. Um, let's ask, what you doing on your phone? Playing a Dragon Ball game? It's not, it's not like it's core or anything. I'm just killing time. Miles, if you like Dragon Ball Z, you like Dragon Ball Z. If I like Dragon Age, I like Dragon Age. If I like Mass Effect, I like... Oh, look at those little axolotls. Oh, that is cute as shit. Oh, my God. <laughs> that is so... Oh, my God. I'm Hold on. This is kind of cute. Look at the little cats. Sorry, that is adorable. That is adorable right there. Um... See ya, Miles. See ya. Miles' focus turns back to his phone as you leave the general store. Miles, you don't give a fuck. And I, I stand. You enter the former town hall. What must have been a stately foyer has since been converted into rows of shelves. Meeting rooms and offices long ago gave way to assorted references collections, sorry, reference collections and reading areas. Hey, you made it. What's the point in shushing her? Like, why we can be such an ass at this game? You head over to Stella and Kanika's table and settle in. <laughs> this pug. You made it. Glad you could join us. Morning, Pyrus. You look tired. 
snitch on Miles. I'm not gonna snitch on him. Fuck that. I love Miles. Um. Let's see. Let's see. <laughs> yeah, the estate isn't the easiest place to get a good eight hours. I never realized houses could get so windy. I can only imagine. That place was already falling apart the last time I was there, and it's been years. I can't believe it hasn't been condemned. Not that there's anyone here to do the condemning. Anyways, I guess we should get started. Oh! Before I get- before I forget, we gotta talk about that photo you sent me this morning. Kanika, check this out. Pyrus found it in Tabby's garden this morning, right in the line of sight of her room. What in the world is that liquid around it? It looks like pus. Do you think it's Wayne? That creep who keeps coming around my mama's tea room? He snuck up on us last night and called Pyrus out by name. And those blueprints match up with the mining and get up. Whoa. Apparently I missed a lot last night, huh? I wonder if there's any connection between that guy and what happened in the woods last night. Like what? I mean, I don't have anything specific, but we do have the whole prophecy of impending doom angle to explore. And this photo is weird. I can't stop thinking about those splatters on the ground. If he's sick, maybe it's from the creatures you encounter. Hey there, strangers. Oh, uh, who's this? A literal stranger. I don't... They look like somebody's father. Hey, I'm Pyrus, Tabitha's cousin. I'm in town for the funeral. I should have known you were a Scarlet. You look so much like Vivian. Not that I knew her very well. I was still a little kid when she left. But that Scarlet resemblance, it's, uh, strong. What does that mean? Not that it's a bad thing. Uh, I'm Oscar Gutierrez, chief librarian and only librarian. Oscar's amazing. He practically built this library from scratch. Yeah, I'm a little jealous of what the kids around here get to grow up with. They don't know how good they have it. Back when I was in elementary school, all the library had was a couple of shelves of boring books donated by old people. Y'all are too kind. But this, speaking of kids, but speaking of kids, have either of you seen Rosalina around town? Who the hell is Rosalina? I don't want to be a helicopter dad, but she hasn't been answering my texts, and I wanted to make sure she isn't getting into trouble out here. Excuse me. Sorry, y'all. Hit the mic. You know the trouble... Sorry. You know the crowd she hangs around with. They're good kids at heart. I'm sure they're just up at the old Maxwell place doing teen stuff. I went up there plenty of times in my day, but I'll be sure to keep my eyes peeled. What's that? What's the old Maxwell place? It's a great old abandoned spot. We used to hang out there when we were teens. I can't believe I used to be so reckless. The floors there are like Swiss cheese. I should really have a talk with Rosalina when she gets home. Um, on, yeah, let's say that. I don't like the thought of teens getting mi getting up to mischief with all those ditchlings in the woods. Ditchlings? That's actually why we came in today. Have you heard of them? They're a cryptid, and seeing one's supposed to mean a disaster's around the corner. Doesn't ring a bell. Dang, worth the shot. Okay, if you were, say, trying to predict a horrible disaster that might befall our town, where would you start looking? <laughs> Stella's so cute. Well, sorry, I don't like Stella. Sorry, look, I, that's my moment of weakness. Yeah, that is why they call me the weakest link, because, like, she literally got that man killed, and I'm like, oh, she's so goofy. She's such, she's so quirky. Well, they say history repeats itself, so I probably try and figure out what sort of disasters this region typically falls prey to. Uh, should I be worried about something? I don't know yet. I'll be right back. Gonna nab some more books. Behave while I'm gone, Gretchen. Aw, oh, you don't have to worry about her, Stella. You're such a good dog, aren't you, Gretchen? Here, have a biscuit, old gal. Gretchen inhales the soft biscuit, drool leaking from her toothless mouth as she swallows it whole. I'm pretty sure Stella's barking at- I'm sorry. I'm pretty sure Stella's barking at the wrong tree, Oscar. I don't think you have to worry about any horrible calamity befalling the town. But she's right about the weird stuff. 
There's definitely something unusual going on out in these woods. Um, I don't want to scare him. Let's let's say this. I don't want to be like a man's already dead. It's nothing we can't get to the bottom of. I'm gonna try calling Rosalina again. I'm sure she's fine, really. Rosalina's a smart kid. She knows better than going around getting into trouble, and we'll make sure she keep we make sure to keep our eyes peeled. Thanks, Kanika. And Pyrus, if you see a 13 year old girl with black with the black braid and glasses, won't you let her know her dad is worried about her? Oscar anxiously wanders off, phone in hand. Got him. Just grabbed a whole mess of local history books. Stella sets a massive pile of books on the table and pulls up a chair. All right. This is going to be so much faster with the two of you helping out. Got our snacks and our source documents. Let's get this research party started. Reading awaits. Okay. Um, let's look at our history. Oh, there's a lot of Scarlet history. Well, let's, let's flip through this one. Forced into retirement at age 50 due to a war injury from his time in the Indian Wars, exacerbated by his short stint serving as a captain in the Confederacy. Um. I don't think I'm a Scarlet. Um. I am. Okay. Okay. Silas Scarlet also lost his two eldest sons in the bloodiest of wars. Excuse me leaving his third eldest son, Andrew Jackson Scarlet, to take charge of the mine. Under his leadership, the mine prospered, undoubtedly in part due to the growth of the railroad industry. Managed to evade the coal union for decades, making them one of the most profitable profitable mines in the country. So, basically, the Scarlets have been exploiting people. I feel like when you avoid a union, you're just, like, exploiting people, right? Like, forgive me if I sound ignorant. I don't really know that much about, like, corporate America. But... If you're avoiding that, these people were like ba basically in poor conditions and the Scarlets were making money off these people. Andrew Scarlet built the surrounding town into what it is today with expensive stone buildings and a bustling main street and overseeing it all the elegant Scarlet estate that was until 1889, the largest and finest feat of so agriculture, architecture in the region. Culminating in the tragic collapse of 1918, it was found that Charles Shaw, the co-manager of the mine, had loosened security measures to increase production during World War I, resulting in a fatal collapse in the deaths of over 160 men and boys, some as young as 10. Damn! So I was right. <laughs> Not in a good way, I didn't want to be right, but... Basically, guys, the Scarlets have been exploiting people for centuries. Um, even so much so, exploiting them and p keeping them in poor working conditions as far back as the World War World War One, um, and a lot of people died in those mines. The casualties included Andrew Jackson Scarlet's eldest son Theodore, who had taken over for his aging father during the bustle of the war. His brother Enoch B. Scarlet managed to pull the mine from the brink of ruin, thereby saving the town. So this is how our family made its fortune. Excuse me, guys, I'm sorry. I'm a little tired. Silas Everett Scarlet was born to Connell Everett Jr. Scarlet, J. Scarlet, sorry, in 1818, one of the 12 siblings, one of 12 siblings, who grew up in eastern North Carolina, during a tumultuous time in the state's history, and not much does my there are words. Not much is known about his life before he joined the army in 1836. He quickly rose to the ranks in part due to his father's connections, but also due to a particular ruthlessness for which he received the nickname Bloody Silas Scarlet. The federal government granted now Captain Silet Silas a tract of bounty land. <sighs> in exchange for his service in the Indian War. Oh, wow. And he settled into the hills of North Carolina into 1841. That land would become Scarlet Hollow. But it started as a s simple log cabin built by Silas's own two hands 
occupied by his family of 10. Silas, his wife Mary Joseph Scarlet, and their eight children? Damn! Logging business brought The logging business brought many workers and fellow landowners to the hills, but it wasn't until Silas discovered rich seams of coal running underneath the entire region that Scarlet Hollow was really put on the map. He saved what he could and bought the surrounding hillside at a great discount. We all know what that means. Cleverly hiding what he knew about the land's true value. Thus, he had all the resources to found Scarlet Hollow's new famous, now famous coal mine. You're finished with this one. A few entries catch your eye. Um, let's just start from the top. Wampus Cat, a cat-like creature with loud, with a loud howling voice often said to sound like a woman crying out in pain. Often linked to Cherokee legends, some cite the Wampus Cat as originating with the story of a woman who sought vengeance against a monstrous cat demon for driving her husband mad. She hunted it down and by wearing a bobcat mask, tricked it into using its own vile magic on itself freeing the people of the region from its evil. Others say the creature comes from the story of a woman who wore the pelt of a wild cat to witness forbidden hunting rites. The hunters of her village gathered to perform the rites and she watched in secret from underneath the cat's pelt but was soon discovered. For her indiscretion, she was fused with the pelt and transformed into the creature that was neither human nor cat, forced to wander the wilderness alone and feared by all. Her calls are those of great sadness and serve as a warning to anyone who dares go against tradition. Ugh. Okay. Tommy Knockers originated in Cornish mythology, spreading to the United States when Cornish immigrants began working in the Appalachian Mountains. Mines, sorry. Um, they're named for knocking. They're named for knocking that can be heard from seemingly within the walls before a cave-in. So, you hear tally, what's timey knockers? According to some, the knocking serves as a benevolent warning. Others believe that the creatures take stolen hammers to, su to the supports of mines and collapse them on whatever is unfortunate enough to still be inside. They are traditionally thought to be impish, leprechaun beings. But some claim they are spirits from dead miners forever cursed to haunt their final resting place. That sounds like... I mean, the second one sounds like the cursed... They they are spirits of dead miners forever cursed to haunt their final resting place. I feel like for Scarlet Mines, that would be true, right? Like, they're forced to kind of be there forever. They 160 people died there. There was a hunter who lived in a tiny cabin in the middle of the woods, all alone with his hunting dog. One night, after a particularly bad week of hunting, excuse me again, I'm sorry, both their stomachs empty, I'm sorry for making you yawn, the hunter spied something out of the corner of his eye. Some small creature had gotten into the cabin through a hole, and before he could even figure out what it was, he drawn his gun and fired at the thing, his hunger guiding his actions. But it was quick, and it ran back through the hidey hole and out of sight, leaving only its long black tail shot off by the hunter's rifle. Guess I'll have to do. This will have to do, he said to his dog, and threw the tail in the pot to cook a soup. What? You just eating random tail? The hell? He and his dog ate well that night, the tail filling both of them up. The hunter called him to bed satisfied, and his dog curled up at his feet. He woke up to the sound of long nails scrabbling across the wood. His dog was nowhere in sight. Only a rumpled spot on the covers where he'd been, and in the gloom, he saw two big yellow eyes staring at him. I want my tally po, a high, hoarse voice croaked from the darkness. Go away, he screamed at the thing. But it stepped closer to him. It shrouded in darkness, the sound of long claws dragging across hardwood and accompanying its move. I want my tally po. Tally po? Tally po? Tally po. Yeah, tally po. Where am I getting that from? 
The creature growled again. I'll get my dog after you, the hunter squeaked, his voice catching in his throat with fear. But there was no dog to be seen. I want my taily po Before the hunter could so much as scream, the creature leapt from the darkness. Long claws stretched out towards the hunter. No one is sure what the creature did to him that night. But the next morning, all remained of, all that remained of the hunter, his dog, and his cabman was a chimney standing alone in the woods. <sighs> he closed the book and put it back. I'm all done with my check-in. All right. If we're going with Kanika's mom, what Kanika's mom told us last night, I think we can rule out any natural disasters as to what brought the Ditchlings here. But not nuclear incidents. Looks like our state has a history with those. What about y'all? Find anything? Oh, a cat! Is this... Oh, no, this isn't the cat from... The other cat's Tuxedo Cat. Before you can respond, a handsome black cat... Excuse me, leaps onto the table. Stella quickly <coughs> slams her book shut. Excuse me, guys. Oh, hey, Pixel. Oh, man, if we chose to talk to animals, Trait, we could talk to them. Oh, damn, I'm going to do a playthrough where we have a talk to animals, Trait. I'll probably just, maybe just watch some highlights once we finish um, the game. You might want to close your books. She loves to rip... Sorry, you might want to close your books. He loves to rip up any paper he can find. <laughs> Don't worry, little guy. I didn't forget your treats. Pixel immediately goes to, to town on Stella's streets. Sorry if Pixel's bothering y'all. Hopefully he hasn't gobbled up any of your books. He can't stand the thought of people... He can't stand the thought that people might pay attention to anything that isn't him. Why do you let a paper shredder freely wander the library? Have you seen this little guy's face? How could I say no to that? He decidedly Pixel B. The cat curls up on a table, fast asleep. Oh. Alright, I better get back to shelving. Let me know if y'all need anything. Let's see. Um, have y'all had any luck with Rosalina? <laughs> Not yet. I knew a team would be a handful, but I think didn't think this would happen overnight. I'll probably head out once you're all done here. And check in on her, sorry, something's in my eye. Checking, check in on her usual haunts. Um, I don't know, I don't want you to. Let's talk about, so about the coal mines here, Kanika visibly shudders. I get cold sweats just thinking about a place like that. I feel for the guys who work up there, I could never. Wait, people still work at the mines? Oh, obviously. I'm so stupid, y'all. Not stupid, but, you know, I can't believe I forgot that. Because the mines are still open. I guess part of it's closed off? Speak for yourself. I love a good crevasse. <laughs> okay. I don't want to say that. Like, that's so insensitive. What happened after the mine collapsed? The book just kind of glosses over that. There was a union for a bit, but it didn't last. There's not a whole lot written about the past century here. Yeah, the Scarlet Hollow Mine isn't exactly the most ethically run business. No offense or anything. I'm sure Tabby runs the mines better than Charles Shaw did. Still hasn't let the union in, though. There's a reason she and I don't talk. Ooh. Okay, um... I have a bone to pick with that motherfucker, too. He literally... Wasn't he a fucking Confederate soldier? Um, I don't want to say that. Like, that's obvious, but... I don't think there's any poison. I, I think this is perfect. I'm not sure how they tie in, but the mines seem important. The whole town is built around them. Maybe the ditchlings are warning us about another collapse writing it down as a list of potential disasters <sighs> Stella's that's morbid and besides it was all Charles Shaw's fault the labor market is way more strict now there's no way you could get away with this kind of safety cup acts he fooled uh, y'all don't actually think the mine's about to collapse right maybe you should stop being nosy Oscar no 
Whew, I may worry there for a second. I hate to give Tabitha any credit, but the mine is safer now than it was way back then. You never know. Um, let's talk about Silas. Because I know there's some options that make you go forward. I don't want to go forward yet. I'm going to kind of explore everything. I don't think he was a... I don't think he was a great guy. Like, he was taking advantage of his privilege. Which is what everybody did back then. Yeesh. If I figured old money from the South wouldn't be great... I figured old money from the South wouldn't be great, but he, uh... Sure did some things to get where he was, huh? That book is a perfect example on why you should use multiple sources for research instead of trusting the first thing you read on a subject. Yep. He was a monster. The mines had a, made a lot of money during the Civil War, too. And you can probably guess which side the North Carolinian business owner would be working on, working for. Sorry you're related to him. I don't know if... Maybe there was something, like... Um... The only thing I think of is, like, maybe the mines are, like, a sacrifice of some sort. Maybe those 160 people were sacrifices for something. And now that there's no longer a sacrifice, like, some years have gone by without a sacrifice, the dishlings are back to kind of claim what's theirs. That's what I think. That's my prediction. I'm going to say this. Do you think the ditchlings are here for retribution? That's not the closest thing to say. That seems... Tenuous. Assuming Kanika's mom is right, they're here as an omen, not because they're going to do something themselves. And I think we know how I feel on that matter. Hmm. Okay. Do you think there's a cult here? You lean in and quietly whisper to Sel and Kanika. Do you guys think there's like a cult here? They this this. Maybe the ditchings were, like, summoned as a part of a ritual or something like that. Seems unlikely. I get needing... I don't know. That seems... Um, let's talk about these nuclear incidents. Stella, what were you saying about nuclear incidents? You were talking about gold the gold swell thing, right? <laughs> yeah. Apparently in the 60s, a B-52 carrying a live warhead broke up midair and dropped a couple of bombs. Fascinating bit of history there. The first of the two bombs landed upright after its parachute caught, got caught in a tree. Thankfully, it didn't go off. At the time, the government claimed that the bomb was unarmed, but it later came out that the only thing preventing the detonation was a single electrical switch which failed to trigger on the descent. And 60 years later, the second bomb still hasn't been recovered. Right. It's conventional explosive disintegrated in midair, but most of the nuclear material was made unrecoverable. Woo! Unrecoverable by flooding. If I remember correctly, they just buried it and sealed it up. I don't think the, the bomb made the ditchlings, though. I feel like if there was nuclear fallout, we would have more evidence of that. Even if this is North Carolina. Like, in the, like, deep crevices of... Crevasses of North Carolina. We would have some kind of, like... Inkling that that's what's going on. I don't think that's what's happening here. So I'm not gonna say that. Um... I'm just gonna say this. I don't think disarming nuclear bombs is a part of our skill set. <laughs> Absolutely not. Also, Goldsboro is almost 400 miles from here. I think we're good. I'm just saying. You never know with radiation. We actually know quite a bit. That's what I'm saying. It melts you, and it doesn't make monsters. And the 60-year-old bomb isn't going to explode on its own hundreds of miles away and kill us here. You never know. There could always be a whole underground society of bomb-worshipping mutants just waiting to blow it up. 
<laughs> I miss this. <laughs> I love them low key. Like it's it feels like I'm actually a part of the group. I hope you guys are immersed. I, I really hope you guys like this series. It's one of the things that I just like love coming back to when I like missing gaming, so um, let's talk about the folk monsters. I think those were interesting. I do think Tommy Knockers are those the ones that are No, I don't think they're Tommy Knockers. Do you think Wayne is a Tommy Knocker? Maybe he's a ghost of a dead miner. That's what I'm thinking. There's something seriously wrong with the guy, and we should definitely look into it, but I don't think he's a ghost. Yeah, ghosts tend to be tied to a specific place, though maybe he's haunting the whole town? He's not a ghost because ghosts aren't real. I've seen him, like, touch stuff. Wait, really? I actually believe um, those. Um... My mom used to tell me about Taily Pope story back when I was little. I can't believe I forgot about that one. It scared me so bad I didn't eat soup for years. I thought a monster might try and to get out of my stomach if I did. <laughs> I love that one. And this old chimney in the woods that I used to think was the chimney from Taily Poe? The one that was left after the thing did what it did? Whoa, hold on. Sorry, let me read that over because I feel like... <laughs> I love that one. There's this old chimney in the woods that I used to think was the chimney from Taily Poe. The one that was left after the thing did whatever it did. Now I know it's just because chimneys don't burn down and wooden houses do. That doesn't mean it's not the chimney from Taily Poe. I've camped out there a couple of times and I've seen some pretty spooky stuff. So that's the thing. So this is happening. Maybe the- hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm- I'm sorry and insert the little calculation thing maybe it's because the scarlets are back together so stella just said something really important she just said that she used to camp out in the woods so if that's the case wouldn't she have been running into ditch links like quite regularly since they only come out at night maybe a disaster is that the scarlets are back together and that causes something like maybe that's something a curse like a scarlet curse or something because of what they did to the land and the people because it didn't start till I came here, right? Huh. I'm, that's just some food for thought. Let me know your comments. Let me know, sorry. Let me know your, like, theories of what's going on with the ditchlings in, like, the town below in the comments. I promise. I'm, I'm reading the comments. If you guys leave comments, I haven't gotten it yet. But I really wish you guys did comment. Um. So, like, let me know what you guys think in the comments. I really want to know what you guys have for theories. But yeah, I watched that video and saw raccoons. You're gonna get rabies one of these days, chasing after wildlife like that. What can I say? I like to live on the edge. Wumpus cat sounds like there could be mountain lions. Voice like a woman crying out, somewhere between person size and cat size. Definitely. There are 100% mountain lions. I don't believe that. Kanika, you know there are no mountain lions up here. I thought you were supposed to be a skeptic. But myths are old, right? Mountain lions didn't go extinct in the Appalachian that long ago. The legends haven't died off just yet. Almost every cryptic can be tracked down to either a hoax or someone getting confused about a perfectly normal animal. Sometimes both. Bigfoot, for instance, started out as a prank. Then folks saw bears walking around on their hind legs and they got freaked out. Is that what happened? That's what happened? What? You're telling me that that's how bigfoot started people saw bears walking around and it flipped bears are scary bro bears look like people in suits so i guess i see that oh shit wow that's crazy that's crazy you'll eat those words when i <laughs> get the first clear footage of a bigfoot if you can manage that i will print out a piece of paper say paper say <sighs> words are hard though if you manage that i will print out a piece of paper that says bigfoot isn't real and I'll literally eat it, I promise. I'm holding you to it. Okay, let's move on. Um. I think we should check out the mines, but but I kinda wanna help look for the kid, because we should go check out the mines. 
between Wayne and the old collapse and the fact that the whole town's practically been built around them, it seems like the smartest place to start. Good idea. There's an awful lot of mine related stuff in my notes. We can poke around and find out if anyone's been seen anything weird. Just to clarify, you two were suggesting we go to question some of the miners, right? We are not poking around unprepared in actual mines, right? Dot, dot, dot. Right? Yeah, totally, 100%. I would never... We don't even have a good reason to go down there. Good. Let's keep it that way. You know how I feel about the mines. Oh, I think her father died in the mines. I promise, Neeks. We're just going to question some of the miners. And if that questioning gives us a good reason to poke around, say, an old abandoned coal mine, then we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. You can cross that bridge when we come to it. I'm not going underground. I'm just messing with you. We'll stick to the surface. Yeah, and hopefully we can find out what happened. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, my sister just called me, and I had to make sure I answered. I love her so much. <laughs> um, yeah, and hopefully we can find out what happened to Wayne while we're at it. Hopefully this means I'll get a chance to know Tabitha a bit better. I don't think she's going to be super jazzed to see any of us snooping around the mines, let alone bothering her while she's trying to run the place. She does get a little grumpy when she's at work. She gets grumpier at work? I'm pretty sure snark is that girl's baseline level of existence. Chatting over dinner might be a better way to get lower. If you're okay with eating box mac and cheese, damn. We can sneak around. <laughs> what? How does she know about mac and cheese? We can sneak around the mines no problem. I'll make sure to keep my eyes peeled for her. She won't even know we're there. Look at us. Going out on the caper together. I miss this. I missed it too. I mean, sure it's not under the best circumstances, but we've been wrapping up in... Sorry. We've been, we've been so wrapped up in running the store, I didn't realize how much I miss being able to hang out with you. Though, there is something missing. Reese. I really miss that dude. I can't believe how long it's been since we've seen each other. Have you seen him lately? No. Nope. I tried to plan stuff, but he's been too sick. I didn't realize it was getting so bad. That poor guy. You know, we could just pop over and surprise him. He seemed excited to meet Pyrus. Maybe we'll finally get him to leave the little cave. Hell yeah, let's do it. All right, let's roll out. See ya, Oscar. Well, we'll let you know if we run into Rosalina. Thanks, guys. I'll keep you all posted. Reese's home stand at, stands at the edge of the forest wall, an isolated buffer cushioning the rest of the town from unending wilderness. Reese, it's Stella. I bought some buddies, too. Shh, not so loud. He's sleeping. Can I help you with something? The woman in the doorway stares directly into your eyes. You can practically feel her shimmering, simmering irritation washing over you. Uh, hi, Dr. Kelly. We're wondering if it'd be okay if Reese could come hang out. Nothing strenuous. We promise. I'm not going to wake him up. He's sleeping, and he probably needs it. Whatever you two have planned is probably beyond what he can manage right now anyways. Oh no, poor Reese. It's just been so long since either of us have gotten the chance to hang out with him. I'm sure he and Pyrus will get along super well too. I'll say this. So if Reese is sick, we shouldn't be dragging him along on adventures. Stella mutters under her breath. Snitch. <gasps> oh! Reese turns her back to the house, sighing. I didn't know. Oh my god, I didn't know that I just snitched. Sorry, I know that was a little rude. You just want to hang out with Reese, and he misses both of you, too. She sighs again, as if deciding whether to finish her thought. He's usually feeling his best around mid-afternoon. Why don't you come over tomorrow? We can have some supper. Y'all can hang out for a bit. I don't promise that he'll be perky, but I'm sure it'll brighten up his spirit to see you two again. 
and I suppose he can come to Pyrus. That would be great. I can bring a side dish, maybe deviled eggs. Does he still eat those? No, eggs are too much for him. They don't settle down well. You can leave the cooking to me. I know what he can handle. Okay, I'll bring soda then. That's not... Okay, yes, fine. You can bring soda. Nothing with caffeine. Ginger ale, preferably. Oh, and leave the dog at home. She might cheer him up. You know how they have those therapy dogs and hot... No dogs. Th thanks, Dr. Kelly. We'll stop bothering you now. See you later. Dr. Kelly nods acknowledgement and quickly shuts the door. The sound of several locks clicking in the place can be heard from within. I didn't mean to snitch. God, that woman makes me nervous. I remember she used to be so nice and carefree when we were kids. She's always had the best stickers when we get our shots. Maybe she's just stressed about Reese. And maybe she's just nice to kids. Either way, I guess it's the three of us. You gonna drive? Yeah, sorry. I don't like the thought of going out there without the van. Cool. I'll take my shortcuts then. It shouldn't be long for me to get there. Welcome to Tag Along, Pyrus. Don't worry. I won't be offended if you'd rather hide with Kanika. I'm sure you're probably sick with the woods. Either way works for me. Um, I'll walk with Stella. Just to make sure she's safe. I'll walk with Stella. We'll meet you there. The woods are calm and serene compared to the last night. You can't help but get the feeling that danger lurks beyond the trees. Hey, thanks for coming along with us. For crutching in me, I mean. Hope I haven't seemed too cold about everything that happened last night. The truth is, I'm barely keeping myself together. I... I just don't know how to let it out. Duke died out there last night. And I can't stop thinking that it might have been my fault. If only I died for that flashlight. If only I didn't drag you along in those woods. If I only listened to you when you said you wanted to leave. I'm sorry. Stella pauses, searching for what to say. It's like there's this guilt boiling under my skin. The only way I can process what happened is by turning off that part of me that fuels things. When I'm around other people, it's like I think of Duke dying. It's like I think of Duke dying as just a thing that happened. Like it's just a part of another video. Because if I actually admit to other people that I feel something, then I'd have to admit to myself what happened is my fault. Oh, I know I said I would blame her. But... I want to blame her so because it is her fault but she's beating herself up enough about that i'll say this what happened happened and we can question our decisions or blame ourselves for what happened until the cows come home but we can move forward together thanks pyrus you're right i should be better at taking my own advice i'm glad we could talk about this though i can't imagine what it'd be like what it be like to go through something like last night alone the conversation comes to a dramatic halt with you, Stella, and Gretchen all whirling around to face the source of the sound. Oh. Whoa, Stella. Calm down, girl. It's just a bird. It's the same. The same probably goes for the two of us. <laughs> I guess we're all a little on edge. Let's hurry to the mine. It shouldn't be much further. Kanika casually leans against her van as you and Stella emerge from the woods. Hey. Y'all have a good walk? Yeah, it was great. I mean, not that you were missing out or anything. You didn't run into any of those creatures, did you? Nope. That makes sense. They're probably nocturnal. I don't know if I should feel relieved or disappointed. But we, we're all here. What's the plan? I guess we just go talk to people. I guess so. I should probably be on the lookout duty. I'm a bit of a person non grata in the mines. Persona non grata? Gr gratata? In the mines? I don't know what that means. Tabitha? Yeah. I might try seeking in to talk to her time or two. Time? Oh, God. Well, words are hard, guys. Yeah, I might have tried seeking in to talk to her a time or two too many. And Gretchen makes it extra hard to be sneaky. You're probably less likely to get caught if only one of us snoop around town. Down here. Words are hard. Words are hard to say see you. 
I've got this. I've got this. You'll be great. So the plan. You know the cheesy old rom-coms where somebody wears their earpiece on the first date? Whoa, do you have some kind of surveillance set up in the back of your van that I didn't know about? What? No. I have a pair of earbuds with a really good mic. We can just do a group call. Kanika hands you a pair of earbuds. We can feed you questions if you get stuck, and Stella can give you a heads up if Tabitha is headed your way. Dang. I miss doing this sort of thing with you. You're so thorough. Well, thanks. I do my best. I guess we should part ways and start the call, yeah? Stella and Kanika break off, leaving you alone at the entrance to the mines. Your phone buzzes. Hey! Can you hear us? Try saying something. You're loud and clear. Cool, same goes for you. Nothing to do now but to enter the work site. Enter. You pass through the unlocked fence and enter the property of the Scarlet Hollow Mine. I'm in. All right, Morpheus, good to know. You approach the nearest group of miners, a blonde woman, a broad-shouldered man, and an old-timer. Their uniforms identify them as Harrison, Davis, and Zax. You got a reason to be bothering us? anything weird lately? The miners looked you up and down. Weird how? Mm. Like weird animal sightings. Nope. You been talking to that townie? The one the boss gave a lifetime ban to? Wait, are they talking about me? Yeah, she's like a Bigfoot YouTuber or something. Her videos are actually pretty good. Yep, that's me alright. Oh, that's so sweet. But, you know, now that I think about it, it's pretty weird. I haven't been seeing many animals at all lately. It used to be I see all sorts of critters. Now it's just mostly birds. This is your first year up here, ain't it? Just not used to the seasons changing. All the animals are hibernating, that's all. I don't know, she's got a point. I've been up here five years now, and it's never been like this before. Hmm. Maybe it's the global warming thing, too, then. I think they're calling it climate change now. Mm. Have you heard any weird noises coming from the woods? Not a peep. We're underground most of the day, though. You know, I heard something unusual the other night. Thought it might have been an owl or something. But it didn't sound right. It was an owl. Just not used to local wildlife yet. I got a couple other questions. Ask them about Wayne. Do you guys know anything about a guy named Wayne? Yeah, we knew him. He was such a cut up. Missed that dude. Mm. I'm wondering, I don't know what to say. I don't want to set them off. <clears throat> Why are you talking about him in the past tense? I met him last night. Good question. Wait, what? No way. Isn't that the guy y'all said us? Uh, um, well, I guess he ain't. And he hasn't even skipped town, huh? Pretty unexpected turn of events, if you ask me. Where did I leave? I thought something awful happened to that poor guy. They're not going to tell me. Actually, that's all. Thanks. Bye. You walk away from the miners. I don't want to set them off when they, like, tell Tabitha I'm here. Maybe it was just me, but they made it seem... But they seemed to think Wayne was dead, right? It wasn't just you. You head over to our next group of miners. Keen eye. A flash of movement in your periphery stops you in your tracks. There's something lurking in the shadows to your right, and against your better judgment, you turn to face it. Oh, you shouldn't be up here. 
it's dangerous. Why are you following me? You don't have to be afraid of me. Stay home. Wait for the week to end. Don't keep putting yourself in the path of danger. This is all I ask. Before he can say another word, the figure is gone. Hey, Pyra, she's still there? We've been getting static from you. Wayne got the jump on me. Whoa, I thought I saw you talking to someone down there. Are you okay? He told me to stay at this state for the rest of the week, that I'd be safe there. Why would he tell me that? What the hell is that supposed to mean? He must have been threatening you, right? The plot thickens. Wayne is trying to make me leave just means we're on the right track. I'm not about to back down. Whoa, so brave. Heck yeah, Pyrus, we got your back. Hey there, can we help you with something? Have you fellas seen anything out of the ordinary lately? Like what? Um... Have you seen any weird animals? Don't tend to go to many hikes, not exactly the nature scene type. After a full day at work, all I see is my bed, maybe a few beers in between. Let's see. Any odd noises in the woods? I heard something a few nights ago. Nothing like I ever heard some unearthly beast. I'm telling you, Isaac, you need to take a sick day. You need rest, man. I've already taken a sick day this year. Can't afford to take any more if I want Christmas off. Tabitha. It can't be that bad here, right? Have you heard any knocking from the mines? Knocking? Not that I've heard. Can't hear shit down there with the machines and men working. My dad used to work these mines before they bought in the continuous miner. The big machine, that's it, that is. He told me stories about something that sounded like someone was pounding on the walls. No offense, Isaac, but your daddy had a few screws loose. Rodriguez, he was a fine man. I don't know what this means. I don't want to ask that, though. Like, I feel like it's irrelevant. That's all on that front, thanks. Anything else? Do any of you guys know a guy named Wayne? Wayne? Do you mean Sam Wayne? What are you asking about him for? Wait, have you seen him? No. Damn, I thought... He's dead, Isaac. Get over it. No, come on, man. There's no way. How could he just die? I don't know. Why don't you ask his girlfriend? Like, do you think... No. No way. Just saying, he wasn't exactly the first fella to fall victim for her charms. Lots of heartbreak in that woman's history. Lots of jilted ex-lovers if you catch my drift. Dang, who are they talking about? I told him not to get involved with her. I told him. What do you guys think of Tabitha? Now, why would you go asking questions like that? Are you trying to insinuate something? Horrible woman. Now, fellas, let's not go be smirching the fine, gentle lady. If Smith is right, she's got a lot to answer for. All right, fellas, I think we better cool in and get back to work before any of us say something we regret. You're probably right. Isaacs. Can we check in? Just a heads up, the only group I see out there is pretty close to the main office. It might still be worth talking to them, but I don't know if we can give you all that much of warning if Tabitha comes out. Um... Let's just talk to him. What can she say to us? Like, I'm going to try talking to them. Whatever. Who cares? Going around asking questions, huh? You look like you're from the inspector's office. Mm. I kind of want to get to just talking about Wayne. What can you tell me about Sam Wayne? Oh, got himself into trouble, didn't he? Have you seen him around? What's the young buck been up to? I heard from some other folks in the camp that he had a nasty spat with an ex and disappeared not long after. Ha, <laughs> you mean the boss? Huh? As far as I know, that never ended. Stella audibly gasped. 
Yeah, I figured he'd just run off to live in that big mansion with his bell. The thought of that strapping young man like him with the sour face broad always left such a bad taste in my mouth. Oh my god, gross. As if he wouldn't fall on your knees if a woman of means showed the slight bit of interest in you, or any woman at all. Fair enough. But I suppose this begs the question, did she run him off or did some je jealous son of a bitch oust him? Wait, are you talking about Tabitha? Yep. Dang. I figured that's what they were getting at, but it's weird to hear it out loud. You good, Stella? Yeah, just had no idea. They used to date. That's it. Thanks for the help. My pleasure. If what if that Wayne keeps bothering you, just let us know, and we'll whip him into shape. Um, Pyrus, I think we got a problem. Shit, I was trying to get away before she came by. If she did come by. What the hell are you doing here? Oh, crap. Good luck. Sorry, Pyrus. And that's our cue. Pardon us. You shouldn't be here. This place is dangerous. Why can't you just stay in this state and stop sticking your nose where it doesn't belong? And what is this ridiculous thing doing in your ears? Are you trying to record my employees? Are you trying to record me? Tabitha snatches the earbud out of your ears and throws them on the ground. Typical phone addicted city dweller. Ugh. Ugh. And I have a meeting in five minutes. I can't even drive you back. Okay, look. I don't want you wandering anywhere else. Just stay here for an hour and I can take you back to the estate as soon as the meeting wraps up. Can you please do that for me? I'm sorry, Tabitha. What does that even mean? What good is a sorry if you keep doing everything in your power to stress me out? Uh, I'm sorry I disappeared last night, Tabitha. I wouldn't dream of doing anything else to violate your boundaries. What are you going to do next? Actually kill someone in town? I need to get to my meeting. Just stay here until I come get you. Don't move a muscle. I'll collect you in an hour. Tabitha rushes off to her meeting. You stoop to the ground and pick up Kanika's earbuds. Sorry if I wasn't able to give you a better warning. You good? Yeah, I'm good. You're interrupted by a sudden movement at the corner of your eye. A girl carrying a bundle of snacks through a hole in the fence and disappears over the crest of the hill. Uh, I think I just saw Rosalina. Wait, really? What is she doing here? We should call Oscar. Let's handle that after we catch up with her. That's so stupid. God. Kids. You rush over to the hill and get your bearings. The sound of active mining fading into the distance. Rosalina is nowhere to be found, but dusty footprints point towards a nearby mine. She didn't. I guess the old Maxwell place doesn't cut it as a secret hangout spots these days. But the Shaw Mine? That place was shut down like a hundred years ago. After the collapse that killed a hundred people. And here I thought Stella was going to be the one to drag me into an abandoned coal mine. I feel like maybe we should just wait outside. I don't think I could live with myself if something ever happened in there. Let's go. Whoa, you sure you want to tag along, Neeks? Pyrus and I can handle this on our own. Yeah, I'm sure. As much as I hate confined spaces, I'm not about to let Rosalina get hurt in there. Even if that means I have to go on the ground. <laughs> Gretchen! <laughs> Poor baby Gretchen! <laughs> Stella and Kanika disappear into the mines. Before you follow, you briefly wonder if you should let Tabitha know about this. <sighs> I don't know. Like, part of me wants to tell her because, like... What is that in the... It's one of the ditchlings right here in the top left, guys. Um, Part of me wants to tell her because, like, these are the Scarlet Mines. And she knows them better than us, Think I think. But will we run out on... I don't know. Let's... A 
Let's call her. You pull out your phone and dial your cousin. What is it? You know I'm in a meeting. A kid just snuck into the shaman. I figured you should know. What? Are you serious? Why do these things keep happening to me? <sighs> Whatever. I'll be there soon. I'll head over as soon as I can. Just stay where you are and wait for me, alright? God, I don't even know why I try reasoning with you. It's not like you'll listen. I called you out of courtesy, but I'm not going to wait around for you. I swear to God. I'm sorry, but my mind's made up. You hang up the call. Fall can you can sell into the mine. You take a deep breath and follow your new friends into the mine. The inside of the mine is warmer than you'd expect. The air thick and wet. The ceiling hangs much lower than your tall, forcing you and your companions to hunch over. Legs bent in pain. Painful squats as you begin to navigate the maze corridors. Hey, you made it. I told you she would. I just wanted to make a quick call and give Tabitha the 411. Are you kidding me? I don't know how long it's going to take for this to get through to you, Pyrus, but that woman is not to be trusted. Well, what matters is the gang's all here. We'll find Rosalina in no time. What is up with my cousin? Why does she hate her so much? Other than the obvious, you know. The deeper you progress into the mine, the heavier the air becomes. Cold dust hangs in the thick clouds around you, even though this place was abandoned over a century ago. Jesus, it's cramped down here. Does anyone else's chest feel tight? Yeah, abandoned mines are way more claustrophobic than people expect them to be. And this one's real bad, you know. Because of child miners, or should I say, the minor miners? Kanika visibly shudders. Okay, I'm not suspicious, but there's only one way to make sure you get haunted. It's cracking jokes about dead child laborers while walking on their graves. What can I say? I do my best to tempt spirits wherever I go. I actually stuck down here a few times to get some good footage, part of my ghost hunting phase. Jesus, Stella. The things you do for your viewers. Did you find anything? I wish. If any place in Scarlet Hollow actually had- What? I wish. If any place in Scarlet Hollow was actually haunted, it'd be this mine. Hands down. All I got was dust in my lungs and a couple of false alarms. Stella pauses. A sound rushes overhead. My god. What was that? The mine's gonna collapse and we're gonna die here, aren't we? Stella sighs longingly. That's just how wind sounds down here. You sound so disappointed. It just brings back fond memories of my last foray in these depths. Every time I thought I'd finally found a spooky ghost, there wound up being a very un-ghostly explanation. Like local wildlife, for instance. Stella turns on her flashlight up towards the alcove overhead. Those guys got me real good last time I was here alone. Oh my god. There are bats down here? I'm gonna, I'm gonna get rabies, aren't I? I'm gonna get rabies, I'm gonna die in a mine collapse. Oh, you holding up okay, Mix? Yeah, sorry, I'm just a little on edge. Kanika stopped mid-sentence by a thunderous knock echoing from deeper in the mine. Okay, what was that? That was a... I have no idea what that was. Did that sound like knocking to you guys? gotta be tommy knockers right you know maybe it is to think that my house actually been something down here and i missed it the first time around oh no tommy knockers are not real they're not allowed to be real are you trying to give me a panic attack i'd love to spend some extra time poking around down here maybe it's something to do with the mystery the three of you are interrupted by a second less distant sound of a can being popped open okay now that wasn't tommy knockers it came from this way. Follow me. Nukanika follows Stella further into the mines. What the fuck? Is that Miles? You breathe a sigh of relief as the tight passageway give way to small caverns. A small group of teens turns and stares at you with annoyance. What the hell are you doing in here? What the hell are you doing in here? You creeps? Are you stalking us? <laughs> yeah, creeps. 
I just said that Alexis, if he wanted to, if I wanted an echo, I yelled into the Grand Canyon. What? If I wanted to, if I wanted an echo, I yelled into the Grand Canyon. What are you, five? I'm 15, you loser. Who even are you? That's Pyrus, Tabitha's, co Tabitha's, co bleh, Tabitha's cousin. Rosalina, your dad's worry sick about you. And if you ask me, he has a right to worry. Why the hell would you be hanging out in an old mine? Why would the hell would you think hanging out in an old mine would be a good idea? Is the Maxwell place not danger enough? dangerous enough? Uh, because no one usually comes down here, duh. Every nun knows we hang out at the Maxwell place now, so we had to find a new hideout. But you instantly found, so I guess we have to find an even more secluded place where we can just be ourselves. I can't believe our dad sent- I can't believe your dad sent people to follow us, Rosalina. That's messed up. I think that qualifies as harassment. You're right, Becca. It is messed up. I don't need him telling me where I can be. You can at least check in so he knows you're not dead. He loves you and worries about you. He's not asking for much. Don't you kids have school tomorrow anyways? It's fall break. We're not kids. Yeah, we're teens. <laughs> Are those canned strawberry margaritas? Where did you get those? The teens avoid eye contact. Miles tries to melt into the cabin wall. Oh no, I know that isn't you. Miles, it had better not be you. Yeah, whatever, it's me. What are you even doing here? Becca's right. It sounds to me like you're stalking and harassing and that's all, and all that. You're supposed to be minding the store. It's not like anyone comes in on Tuesdays and mom's there, so it's fine. Eyes dart uncomfortably around the cavern as Kanika tears into her brother. It's not fine. It's extremely not fine. Why do I always have to be the responsible one? Do you know what I would have, what I would give to be as carefree as you? I left school so you would have a chance to live, damn, to live your life. And this is what you're doing with it? What do you think dad would think if he, if he could see this? Stealing booze from the family store to dick around in the abandoned mines. Dad's dead, Kanika. But if he were, he'd be disappointed you wound up being such a bossy jerk. Who cares if we're having canned margaritas? So we're nobody supposed to bother us. I'd love to help you all sort this out, but maybe we do it in a not abandoned coal mine. Oh, what are you, an expert on mine safety? They only abandoned this place because there wasn't enough coal left to bother digging anymore. My dad told me, and he's an actual foreman at a continuous mining facility, so he knows what he's talking about. Wait, I thought your dad was a charge hand. No, Alexis, he was promoted last month, and he says this place is totally safe, and we can hang out here anytime we want. Correction, your father was a foreman at the continuous mining facility. We'll see if he even has a job tomorrow morning. What? Oh, shit. Oh, hey, Tabby. Kanika sighs. It's probably for the best that she's here. Do none of you understand what a boarded up mine entrance is supposed to mean? It means closed, condemned, not fit for human use. Oh, come on. This place was sturdy. Check it out. The team with the beanie jumps and slaps a strunt on the ceiling. Oh, uh, was that the knocking we were hearing earlier? Oh my god, Zane, cut it out. You're embarrassing us. I feel sorry for Zane. I'm sorry for Zane's behavior. I don't think he realizes how extremely 8th grade it is to jump and hit things. Uh, no offense, Rosalina. None take. Uh, other 8th graders are totally immature. Not like you, Rosalina. You're chill and smart, too. Enough. The damage is already done. Now leave. I'm tired of people in this town dragging my cousin headlong into danger. I can't believe I actually agree with Tabitha about anything. 
but this is the worst place I've ever been in my life, and I would like to see the sun again before I die. Oh, come on, you guys. Maybe it's not a big deal. Stella. Okay, look. Stella ran. Stella ran. Her ability to just turn a blind eye to things is remarkable. A man just died under her watch. And she's literally just letting... She wants them to just sit in this mind. I don't think she comprehend. Stella's not a reliable person to be around. And I, I, I think future in the game, I'm not going to be around Stella. I think she's just a terrible person to be around like she does not care she's so carefree and it's like detrimental to her safety and everyone around her oh come on guys maybe it's not a big deal we used to do dangerous stuff all the time and i still do dangerous stuff now i mean it's not like this particular so situation i mean i don't like this particular situation what with the whole ditchling thing but outside of that who are we to tell them where they can hang out I don't know who you think you are in this situation, Stella, but I own this mine. It is entirely within my rights to tell them to leave. Much like it's entirely within my rights to tell you to leave. Was your lifetime banned from the mines not a clear enough message for you? Hell yeah, Tabitha. Tear that sad 20-something to shreds. Hey, I'm defending you and I'm not sad. Where'd you get that idea? Uh, running a clickbaity YouTube channel where you run around in the woods chasing nothing is extremely sad. So, she's sad. So what? Give it a few years and you'll be sad too. The passage of time is unescapable. Look, we just wanted to give Rosalina a good time. Her home life sucks right now. Yeah, tell him about where you have to sleep, Rosalina. We've been living in the library for the past couple of weeks. Dad says we can't stay at our house. They got a hot plate and a couple of cots in the back rooms. It's actually a pretty sick setup, but it isn't Zane. Rosalina deserves better. I don't care about your home life. If you're going to do your underage drinking, go do it in the woods. Just get off of my property. Tabitha. Look, Rosalina, I'm sure Oscar has a good reason for all that. He's a good guy and he cares about you. He thinks our house is haunted. Oh. Wait, what? And I should care because? Because it's such a bullshit excuse. I bet he couldn't afford it anymore, and he's lying to save face. What a coward. Becca, I don't think you can, like, say that about other people's families. Isn't that, like, bullying or something? Shut up, Zane. Back up. He says it's haunted? I can't believe he didn't mention it to me. I could investigate. There's no ghost. Stella, it would be cool if there was, but Becca's right. I just wish he'd be honest with me and tell me what was really going on. It's like he doesn't think I can handle it. Like I'm still a little kid. Ugh. You're all children, and none of you realize how good you have it. Back in the day, each and every one of you would be pulling 12-hour shifts in this exact mine. If it weren't for child labor laws, the five of you might have some actual character. Exactly. Rosalina's not all that mature anyways. She still sleeps with stuffed animals. That doesn't mean she's not mature. <clears throat> I still have pork chop, you know? I rest my case. Wait, what did you say about child labor law? Let's see. I'm sure Oscar is doing it to protect you. From what? Even if ghosts are real, what would they even do? Yell boo in your face? Yeah, that's real scary. It totally justifies living in a dusty old library. Yo, we should just break in and, like, ghostbust or something. Oh my god, Zane. You can't bust if there is no ghost. Ghost bust if there's no ghost. Also, Rosalina lives here. She can't break into her own house. Lives there. She can't break into her own house. There's no ghost that you know of. I bet we could figure it out if we bust it. What the fuck am I saying? There's no ghost that you know of. I bet we could figure out how to bust 
it if it's actually real and if it what god there's so many if it's sorry i'm dyslexic y'all and if it isn't real well problem solved you know rosalina you could always stay over at my house until stella goes bust your place we have a finished basement with a pull-out couch why are we talking about <laughs> wait why are we talking about this wait why are we talking about this like it's a thing it's not a thing there are no ghosts i don't care and i can't believe i wasted this much time trying to argue with children i'm washing my hands of this and calling the police feel free to leave before they show up you hear that miles we're leaving i suggest the rest of you kids leave the empty mind before someone gets black lung and gets crushed by rocks or meets one of the many terrible fates people tend to meet in abandoned mines Kanika is interrupted by a pair of thunderous knocks. That wasn't me, I swear. Then what was it? Come on, Stella. Do you have a whole list of perfectly natural explanations for scary mind noises? It's Tommy Knockers for sure. I know this isn't why we came down here, but we gotta check it out. Stella. I know, I know, but weird stuff's been happening around here for the past few days. What if this is our chance to get an actual solid lead? The stakes could be higher. Couldn't be higher. Have you no sense of self-preservation? I want you out of here, Stella. Oh, come on, Tabby. You can come along, too. If you guys are going after spooky, something spooky, count me in. Nobody is going deeper into the mine. Nobody is staying in the mine. You are all leaving. Please listen, Tabitha, before my... Please listen to Tabitha before my heart gives out. It'll be fun, Neeks. It will not. Keen eye. <clears throat> you hear something over the sound of Stella pleading with Kanika and Tabitha. Something like the shuffling of feet on stone. And the whispering, whispering of mischievous teens. Teens. You turn to see Becca and Alexis gone. And Rosalina anxiously hovering in front of a small tunnel in the cavern. She freezes when you notice her. Don't go in that hole. S sorry, guys. I'm gonna hang back. Ugh, we knew you weren't cool enough to hang out with us, Rosalina. Come on, Alexis. We'll have more fun without her. Oh, all right. Are you kidding me? Rosalina, what are you thinking? What are they thinking? I don't know. I'm sorry. Unbelievable. Wow, Kanika. Maybe if you weren't so scared of the dark or whatever, you would have noticed them sneak off. I noticed them sneak off, and, like, I've been zoning out the whole time we've been here. <sighs> they must have scurried through the child's size tunnel. Yeah. Dang. I've always wondered where that goes. I've never been able to get these hips through there. Stella, please stop sneaking into my minds. Please, I'm literally begging you. If only all the tunnels down here were wide enough for adults, we could already be done with all this little mess, but no, you just have to... Words are hard, let me start over. If only all the tunnels down here were wide enough for adults, we could already be done with this little mess, but no, there just had to be remnants of a bygone era. Uh, why don't you just talk about... Didn't you just talk about how child labor was the good old days a minute ago? I was trying to get you to leave the mine. Becca shouts from the other end of the tunnel. We're not. <clears throat> Ew. <laughs> We're not. We are not about to let you come in here and ruin our good time. The mine is safe. I've been here a million times. Yeah, if Becca says we're safe, then we're totally safe. Also, sorry, Rosalina. I'll see you tomorrow. Just whatever. Come on, Alexis. I know the cool spot's this way. Okay, I think I know where that tunnel rejoins the rest of the mines. I'll go look for them. I want each and every one of you to take note of the fact that I'm doing that. If those idiots get themselves lost and die, I'm not letting their family sue me into... I'm not letting their family sue me into the ground. Are... Are those really your priorities right now? Yeah. Do you have a problem with that? I want the rest of you out of my mind. Except for you, Pyrus. I'm not letting you out of my sight. Sure. I could never fit in that tunnel anyways. They have crossed the barrier that I cannot, so 
my time here is up. But only because Stella promised me a ghost hunt tomorrow. Whatever. I still have to do my daily dailies anyways. And service down here sucks. What about you, girl? Are you are you sure you don't want me to come along? Maybe I could help get Becca and Alexis to leave. Don't make me ask you twice. They'll be fine, Rosalina. I think your dad would kill me if I let you stay down here any longer. Okay, can I at least wait outside? Yeah, we can wait outside together. No, you are not about to weasel your way into this, Stella. Oh, her, her puppy dog eyes. Oh, come on, Tabby. We've been down here a ton. I've been down here a ton. I can totally help out. Let's help with the size. There's no getting away, with, getting rid of you, is there? Fine, I won't waste time arguing. I want to say, I mean, honestly, me personally, I don't think, I know this sounds cold, but fuck them kids. B Becca is a bitch. Like, she's she's really stupid, but, like, I know she's a kid and I'm supposed to be the adult in this situation, but she's obviously a bully and an aggressor and she's making people bound to, like, she's bullying them. I kind of want to just say fuck them kids, but Alexis is obviously just going along with shit, so. I don't know. All right, let's do this. Sure. Let's not linger any longer than we have to, shall we? Want me to take Gretchen with me? I don't know. If, I don't know if we'll be. <sighs> Want me to take Gretchen with me? I don't know if it'll be easier to cover more ground without her. <laughs> yeah, that's probably for the best. I don't want a repeat of last night, and who knows if we'll have to do, do any climbing. We'll see you on the other side, hopefully soon. For sure, we won't be long. Cool, can't wait to bust some ghosts tomorrow. Tell Alexis I'm sorry. <clears throat> Kanika, Miles, Zane, and Rosalina head towards the entrance of the mines, leaving you, Tabitha, and Stella to remain to find the remaining teens. All right, no dawdling. Sorry. All right, no dawdling. We should be able to catch up with them if we go this way. That's like my normal voice. <laughs> I love doing Tabitha. She's such an... You and Stella, th Stella exchange glances as Tabitha ventures forward. Venture deeper into the mine. As the three of you move deeper into the mine, you hear echoes of conversation bounce across the walls. Becca, why are we doing this again? I thought Tabitha was, like, really cool. Why are you trying to get her all mad? Ugh, we're doing this because Tabitha's really cool. She doesn't let anyone boss her around. So we can't let her boss us around oh you hear that tabby someone thinks you're cool i can't believe she used to hang out with that nobody like stella <laughs> tabitha's smiling <laughs> tabitha's such a she's so mean like she's like hmm tabitha never mind <laughs> i thought to say something yo pause hey I don't know. I think Stella's kind of cool. I like that River Runner video. Oh, come on. She doesn't even have a sponsor. What kind of YouTuber doesn't have a sponsor? <laughs> I'm sorry. This one. And also, look at Stella's face. She's like, oh my god. These kids are cutting deep. What? I mean, not yet. But I'm in talks with meat rice. And I make plenty from ads and donations. How does it feel to have a teenage girl think you're cool, Tabitha? Dots. I feel nothing about it. The opinion opinions of children don't interest me. I don't know, you kind of hesitated there. You're reading into things that aren't there, Stella. Just because your livelihood revolves around what people think about you doesn't mean I care about what people think about me. Congratulations on your sponsor, though. Dang, Stella, meat rice, that's a big deal. They're like on every big podcast. Thank you, thank you. It's like a really big step up for the channel. I just wish Becca hadn't said all the things she said tonight. She's just mean. It's nothing to do with you. 
You seen how she treated everyone tonight, except Tabitha. Yeah, I guess you're right. I'm surprised you don't have thicker skin about this, Stella. You never struck me as someone who lets other people's opinions bother you. If you did, I wouldn't have to try so hard to keep you off my property. Well, I know you don't mean it. Agree to disagree. Oh man, I wish they're gossiping about me. <laughs> Stella's face! Gosh, I'm not sure about that. They're just teens, but some stuff- Some of that stuff really stung. Another knock closer interrupts your thoughts, followed by another. Followed by another. Is it just me or is that not coming from- Excuse me, I had a hiccup. Is that not coming from the same direction as those kids? It's not just you. I don't really like that knocking. Calm down, Alexis. It's just mind sounds. Did you- Did you see that? N no. It was just a shadow. No reason to get freaked out. Becca, I swear I saw something. Shut up! There's nothing down here. Stop trying to scare me. Uh, I scared my dog with that. Tommy knockers. Tommy knockers. Oh, calm down, both of you. You said it yourself, Stella. As soon as I got deeper into the mine, their bravado in the face of authority would vanish into a puff of smoke. It's probably just Vox falling somewhere deep in the mine, which is also bad for obvious reasons. I can't believe they're making us do this. They better get grounded when all this is said and done. As much as I appreciate the sentiment, I hope you're wrong. If they get grounded, it means people found out about this. I hate dealing with parents. Look on the bright side, Pyrus. If they didn't come down here, we'd miss out on a golden opportunity to get spooked. Tabitha glares at Stella. We're getting closer. Let's keep moving. As you progress deeper into the mine, the knocking grows more frequent. It's still distant, but it's much louder than before. That's scary. The tunnel abruptly ends abruptly in front of you. A century-old ladder is the only way forward. In the darkness beyond, you can still hear the youths, their panicked arguing, each echoing down the pitch-black corridors. Becca, we need to leave. This isn't fun anymore. This is plenty fun. I bet you're only saying that because you want to hang out with that dorky crush of yours. She's just an eighth grader. Becca, this isn't about Rosalina. I know you can hear that knocking. And here we are. The tunnel they crawled through passes through the chamber below. And it sounds like they're still down there. I've never been this far in. Congratulations, Stella. You got what you wanted. Tabitha crawls down the ladder. Crawls up to the ladder and disappears over its edge. Alright, let's do this. Oh, this is so fucking scary to me. Stella hoists herself over the edge and begins to climb down. Balled me down, I guess. Hey, kids. Oh, great. The adults are here. Thanks, Alexis. Real nice. Let's see. What you should say? Kenai, Becca. Becca, is needing to feel like you're better than other people so important that it's worth being buried alive? I think I need to appeal to... I don't know. Like, this is hard because, like, she's obviously not going to listen to me. I think the best way to get through to Alexis is to get through to Becca. No, I'm going to... No, I'm going to talk to Alexis. Alexis, you're so much braver than you think you are. You don't need to let Becca kick you around. Excuse you? No, excuse you, Becca. I don't want to be down here. I don't want to hang out with you. I just want to leave, and I'm going to do that right now. I... Whatever. This isn't fun anymore. Fine, we'll leave. Then do it. Leave. Now. Wow, good job. Thank God. As Becca and Alexis move towards the ladder, the black chamber before you draws your focus. The voices around you. Those of teens and your companions sound odd. 
noticed it. There's something in the darkness before you that's so much louder that you don't hear it. You can actually feel it in your chest, like the deep growl of a predator. You find yourself stepping towards the black chamber before you. Hold on, let me make sure this is loud enough. I want y'all to hear this. It's, it sounds amazing. Hold on. I'm going to open this up real quick. Hold on, guys. Okay. I just want to make sure y'all can hear that. That's It sounds... The sound design is amazing here. You find yourself stepping forward the black chamber before you, compelled by some unnatural force. Hey... Are you alright, Pyrus? What do you think you're doing? Get away from there! Your cousin dives towards you, but not before the light from your phone eliminates the chamber. What the fuck? What? Oh my god, the collapse! Pyrus! Pyrus, are you alright? Oh, thank god you're alive. Look like you had a seizure or something, and then you- You and Tabby just conked out. What's that around us? I'm fine. Ugh. You can barely open your eyes. You're not fine. Neither of you move a muscle. I don't want you straining yourselves while you're still recovering from whatever that was. I'm getting the kids out of here, and then I'm gonna get you both some help. I'll be back soon, I promise. Don't die on me, alright? You fade back out of consciousness as your companion clambers out of the pit. Tit on your rescue. Oh, oh my god, they're spirits. You raise- Oh my god, Tommy knockers! You raise on your elbow, head swimming with the visions. Your surroundings coming back into focus. Your head throbs as the knocking continues. Now magnitude's more intense than ever. Can I? You can't help but notice the timber struts around you trembling as if they are being struck by invisible blows with each knock. They're all that stand between you and and the many tons of rock overhead, and they suddenly seem terribly fragile. God, that knocking is not helping my headache. What just happened? I had some sort of vision. Did you see it too? There's gotta be fumes or something down here. It's an old mine. These places are death traps. They're probably just hallucinating. Are you literally gaslighting me? I said I saw it too. Stop being weird. We're leaving. The entire cavern shakes with the sound of rockfall. I don't know what the hell is up with that knocking, but that is the sound of a mind collapse. Quick! To the ladder! Climb like hell. This way! Come on! Your cousin moves with the kind of swiftness you'd expect from someone who spent her entire life working around in coal mines. Follow her. You push your body to move as quickly as it can. Though you're sl slowed down by the cramped corridors and winding passages of the mine. Then comes the sound of splintering wood. You pick up the pace. The entrance is so close. Push through. There it is. Freedom. You and Tabitha manage to squeeze through the entrance, just as the walls of the mine come crashing down. <sighs> we could have died there, I think. Dude, I think the kids could have died in there if we didn't convince them to leave. Holy shit, you're okay, thank God. And everyone's accounted for. That was a surprisingly close call. We could have died in there. What did you weirdos do? Everything was fine until you adults showed up. Becca, shut up. What? What did you just say to me? I said you should shut up. I'm sick of your two-faced bullshit. They did... They didn't almost, sorry, they didn't almost get us killed down there. You did. And now you're trying to pass it off on whoever else you can. It's just a cherry on top of this whole shit show of a friendship. I'm really not in a good head space for this conversation. I could have died in there. Why are you doing this to me? No, enough. No playing the victim this time. Being friends with Rosalina has made me realize how horrible you are to me. Friends aren't supposed to be mean to each other. Friends shouldn't be scared of each other. I never wanted to go in that stupid mine. It was your idea, and we could have died. And these grown up and if these grown ups haven't showed up, we could have been buried alive in that stupid little tunnel drinking stupid strawberry margaritas in a can. Screw all of you. Should we go after her? No. Let her have her little tantrum. 
Did that feel good, Alexis? Finally telling her off? Yeah, yeah I guess. She's gonna be so mad at me. She probably won't talk to me for a week, maybe a month. Maybe the rest of my life. It's okay, Alexis. You don't need her. What do we do now? Uh, now I'll drive you two home. I already texted your parents, and I'm sure they really worried sick about you. Rosalina and Alexis duck off to the side as an exhausted Tabitha reapproaches the group. I'm gonna get my car, and then we're going home. Tabby. Tabitha leaves towards the act of mine without another word. You're afforded a quiet moment to catch up with Stella and Kanika. There was a stone carving on the wall of that pit. It gave me some sort of vision. I saw what happened to this place. Are you sure it wasn't just auto suggestion? We talked about we talked about the mine a lot today. I don't know, Neeks. You weren't down there. Pyrus and Tabby had some simultaneous seizure. Next to the creepy stone carving, it's just like something out of a movie. Just because they passed out or had Caesar doesn't mean it wasn't auto suggestion. Everything that happened down there is centered around that main chamber where I saw that carving. Sorry, I have an accent sometimes. I have no clue. It's very weird. Stella showed me a photo. Weird stuff. Maybe you weren't entirely off base about the cold stuff you mentioned earlier today, but this thing felt old. I'm pretty sure Tabitha and I saw ghosts down there. Did you not see them? They were right behind Stella just before you all left. Well, I did not see anything other than that carving. That's super weird. I don't want to doubt what you experience. <clears throat> Sorry, my throat hurts a little bit. But we're deep in a dark, abandoned coal mine. You might have just been primed to see things. You know, now that I think about it, it totally fits a profile for some of the Tommy Knocker stories. They were actually bona fide ghosts. Stella. I, I know they were those are Tommy Knockers. It literally describes it perfectly. We sure dodged a bullet tonight, didn't we? Yeah, thank God you noticed them sneaking off. You're incredible down in the pit, too. Not to be flippant, but that wasn't the end of our ditching problem, was it? I made up some words. I think you're right. We still had a lot of unanswered questions, too. Even more than we had this morning. And we had a lot of questions this morning. It's all a little too magic for me. Just because two bad things have happened doesn't mean there's a pattern. Right? What happens now? Looks like Tabu is back. I better drive these kids home. Come on, let's get back to the estate. It's been a long day and I need it to be over. I'll see you tomorrow, okay, Pyrus? Excuse me, I... Just stop trying to get my cousin killed, Stella. Come on, let's go. Tabitha starts walking to her car, pulling you by your arm. You silently follow along. Don't say anything. I'm already in like the hot, hottest water with Tabitha. Tabitha doesn't say a word as the car cuts along the darkened road. You try to keep an eye on the surrounding wilderness as she drives, wary of what may lurk beyond the tree lines. How are you holding up? I've been better. Um. You and Kanika don't seem to get along. She pushes my buttons. Is there history there or? No, now quit talking. I need to focus on the road. Shit. Sorry about today. It's fine. I'm doing terribly, by the way, in case you wanted to know. Yeah, me too. I gotta focus on the road, though. At least everyone's okay. 
There are a lot of parents who should have kept their reins, kept tighter reins on their kids. I never got in any trouble like this when I was a teen. And I have Perlene to thank for that. Hated at the time, but strictness pays off. What am I telling you this for? You can tell me stuff. I like to get, like to know more about you and Perlene for that matter. Maybe later this week. I don't have the energy to get into it right now, but I think I'd like that. <gasps> no, but seriously, you're right. There are a lot of adults who should have done a better job tonight. Exactly. People who aren't ready to be parents shouldn't be parents. And clearly there are some parents who aren't ready. Take Oscar. There are tons of people who are more qualified to be a parent, who can't conceive, and here he is, a kid Having a kid at 19 and clearly letting her do whatever the hell she wants. It's not fair. I don't know if I should touch on that. Like, that's something very, like, like, I don't want to press, but I want to, like, no tab with them more. What do you guys think in the comments? Do you think this is, like, asking her if she wants kids? Do you think that's out of line? Do you want kids? Lots of people want kids. Damn it. Why do you treat Stella like that? Didn't you two used to be friends? It was a different time in my life. I just wish she get that we're not in high school anymore. I'm a different person than whoever, think, whoever she thinks she knows. Your eyes wander back to the tree line as you and Tabitha slink back into silence. You once again cross into the threshold of the estate, the musty cinch of the decaying mansion greeting you with its undertones of mildew and wood rot. Well, this day was a lot more stressful than I needed it to be, but at least nobody got hurt. I'm going to bed, and I suggest you do the same. Thank you for calling me about those kids, by the way. It was unexpected. You could have. No, you should have waited for me. I'm too tired to argue, though. I'll see you in the morning. Tabitha turns and makes her way up the stairs. Turn in. You head to your room to turn in. You collapse in Tabitha's dusty bed. Your head empties of thoughts. After your time in the straw mine, you barely even notice the dust. Your phone buzzes on the table. Oh my god, y'all. These are those things, right? Kanika sends a picture of a pair of ditchlings by the side of the road. I saw them again too. Another pictures of them. A picture, this time of them staring from a tree. What the fuck? These things are definitely not hairless monkey hairless monkeys or raccoons or whatever. I don't know what the hell they are. I guess there are more to them being here than the mind collapse. No way I'm sleeping tonight. You think about looking out the guest window, but at this point you're too exhausted to leave your bed. The adrenaline from this evening is finally wearing off. Replaced by creeping exhaustion that threatens to overwhelm you. Your limbs feel heavy, your eyelids slipping down over your eyes even as you stare down at the ominous pictures on your phone. If it weren't for the pit of dread falling in your stomach, you would almost feel comfortable as you set in between, settle in between the covers, your tired bones sneaking, sinking into the decrepit mattress. When you close your eyes, you see the shadowy figures, shadowy figures that gather behind Stella in the mines. Your thoughts are drawn in the, drawn to the carving in the wall, into the visions it imparted upon you. Your eyes shoot back, your heart pounding as the door to your room swings open. Just a cat. It's always just a cat. It's nice to have another living being, even one as unfriendly as Tabitha's cat. The comfort of her presence sets your mind at ease, and you finally slip into a deep sleep. Oh shit, this is the end of the chapter. They always give us one of these. That was a good chapter. Okay, looks like Tabitha. She knows more than she's letting on. Hmm. Okay. 
Okay. Is the foundations of our mansion gonna fall? Hey. All right, guys. So that is going to be the end of episode two. Thank you so much for watching. I actually really enjoyed this chapter. This episode's a little bit longer um, than the other ones. I just decided to keep it all long. Um, I really do hope you enjoyed this. If you did manage to stick around long enough, um, I, I'll get better at reading, guys. I promise. I really just enjoy this series so much. I just can't give it up. Um, Please like, comment, and subscribe. Please comment. I love reading the comments. Um, and subscribe. You can get notified when I post videos. I'm trying to be more consistent because I actually do really like content creating and, you know, exploring these new games. So let me guys know. Let me guys know. Um, let me know what you guys want me to see. What? Am I having... I'm gonna have a stroke. Let me guys, let me know what you guys want to see next and I'll definitely see if I can deliver. Thank you so much for watching again. Thanks for hanging out with me and Pirates is out.